What's crack like your support, Broach Mode, just in case you did not know. So we're back for a re reevaluation of my draft class grades. What I gave them uh, after the draft, and now we're looking at the postseason grade for the 2019 draft class uh, for all 32 teams. Remember, you're not going to agree with me probably through any of this, but I mean, it is what it is. We all have our opinions. I have my reason. I'm going to lay it out here. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you have any optimism to your, towards your teams, because let me tell you, as a Dolphins fan, it was kind of a rough draft class. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. But um, be sure to become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up. Helps the video get discovered. Uh, more content on the way this week. I got something going on. Uh, should be out tomorrow with the Dolphins uh, offseason slash draft. So got something fun with that coming out. Uh Edge rushers, they won this week, so I'm going to be doing an edge rusher uh, ranking video for the 2020 NFL Draft. Be sure, Thursday I'll have a new poll up, so be sure to vote on what uh, draft or position group we rank next. And uh, yeah, shirts, shirts. I got some buddies that are um, trying to get their business up off the ground, so I got got them somewhere in the, somewhere in this screen of kind of like the prototype what the shirts will and these first batch of shirts will look like and i'll have a poll up in the community tab let me know if you're interested in that and uh yeah so draft class how'd your team do oh let's find out we're gonna start with the dallas cowboys and originally i gave them a c plus turned that sucker to a d a solid d tony pollard he was a home run in the fourth round but fifth rounder Michael Jackson didn't make the roster uh, and he ended up signing elsewhere limited opportunities for Joe Jackson Donovan Wilson and bad play from their second round pick uh, Tristan Hill which I didn't like the pick at the time anyway and on top of that uh, Connor McGovern he headed straight to IR uh, this draft class basically just it, it looks like a bust Mike McCarthy he's known for trying to build his team through the draft build within using the draft so maybe brighter days are ahead for you Cowboy Faithful. On to the Washington Redskins. I love their draft. I gave it an A after. Um, and postseason great. I got it. I got it with a B plus. Scary Terry was a steal. Montez Sweat. He looks like he'll develop into a reliable starter. Haskins has he has more downs than up, but he'll be given the keys to the kingdom next season. His development in year two will um will likely it'll be key to how this draft class really pans out. Holcomb uh, will never be a three-down uh, linebacker. Um, his coverage grade was kind of so-so. But the Skins got a quality slot corner in Jimmy Moreland, who I loved coming into the 2019 draft. We'll know more about um, Bryce uh, Love next season. But outside of that, everything else, eh, it wasn't that great. But the majority of the class was solid. Philadelphia Eagles, I gave it a B plus. Looking like a C now, I'm just saying. They have starters in the foreseeable future in Sanders, Dillard, and undrafted free agent TJ Edwards. Uh, Dillard, he'll get better, but JJ uh, Arthea White or Arthea Whiteside, um, he looks pretty bad when given a plethora of opportunities. Um, Sharif Miller, he was buried on a very deep defensive line depth chart. And Thorson was a waste of a fifth round draft pick. I think we could all agree on that. Giants, I gave it a C. I didn't like the draft initially. Gave it a B plus after uh, after the season. There was a lot to like about Daniel Jones in year one. His fumbling concerns wasn't one of them, but he should get better there. Uh, they have a star in Lawrence and then Baker. He got better by the end of the year, uh, DeAndre Baker. Darius Slayton, he looks like an absolute steal, and so does uh, O'Shane, uh, Conley, uh, Julian Love. They look like good pieces in this draft class. They had a few late round misses, and it hurt their game a little, but but not but not by much, not significantly. This was an excellent class, especially if Jones and Baker improve upon year two. The Miami Dolphins, I gave it a B minus. I was optimistic after the whole Rosen trade. Ended up being a D minus after the season. I'm a Dolphins fan. Fins up, baby. But um, I I see. I felt good thinking Rosen might might have been a good get, and they did get good value. For him, just give it around, give it a second round pick. 
but it just looks like a waste of a second rounder at this point. The Dolphins found more production from their undrafted free agents. Preston Williams, uh, need him. Uh, Wilkins and uh, Dieter, they they looked they looked so so in year one, but this draft uh, it proved it, it just produced nothing of value. They did a good job on their undrafted free agents, but that was about it. Buffalo Bills, I gave them a B, and I'm gonna stick with that grade B. They didn't uh, they didn't get an see to get an A grade, you have to found a superstar for me, and uh, they might I didn't. <sighs> See, I think the Bills did a very good job in the first four rounds on finding guys that have that potential. They just, they didn't pop off with that potential in year one. Oliver is developing in regards to his technique. Um, but if he puts that all together, then they may, they'll probably have a stud there. I really loved Oliver coming out of the draft. Um, if not, they got an above average starter. Uh, I said before the draft, um, the 2019 draft, that Cody Ford, he fits better as a guard and i think we saw that this year they played him all year at tackle and i i hope really hope the bills do move him to guard singletary he was fairly good knox is a solid starter at tight end but everyone else was an afterthought still it's a quality draft bills mafia and let's check some room but yep i am recording <laughs> that would have been awkward if i wasn't new england patriots gave them a b after the season c minus man and i'll tell you why the patriots best player from this draft class was probably the fifth round punter jake bailey uh winovich he, he was used sparingly but great through he was used sparingly but with great effect um i really liked him i thought he should have been a first rounder they got him in the third uh harry he was outplayed by um he was outplayed a receiver by an undrafted free agent jacoby myers and for the most part this class was filled with depth and a lot of healthy scratches um you saw that um with a couple of guys on the offensive line they mainly went to ir after the preseason so again you got good depth pieces for that offensive line but this draft doesn't look like initially it, it um it provided much the jets i loved their draft you gave them an a minus and after the season I got a hot C on this. Now this class might it may take some time to develop. Defensive linemen, especially. Um uh, see defensive linemen typically in Greg Williams, his defense, they take time to produce. They take time to develop. And I, there's still a lot to like about Quinn and Williams, but I expect him to be better next season. He didn't really produce this year, but like I said, it takes time for them to develop. Now that trope doesn't quite apply to Kyle. Phillips, who was an absolute monster. Then you got uh, Chuma Doga. He looked pretty subpar after replacing Brandon Shell, but I expect him to be better in year two. Uh, you got Cashman, Austin. They flashed potential before uh, ended up the season on IR. But this class, for the most part, it looked fairly average this season. Denver Broncos had an A minus on them. I thought they got quality, quality throughout the draft, and it didn't drop much. Um, you're gonna see. A lot of these draft grades, um, uh, for a majority of them, they're a little lower than what I had after the draft. That's because, uh, you know, rookies. some rookies don't play a lot. But I got a B-plus for the Broncos, much uh, like other teams that took quarterback early in the 2019 draft. This, uh, this grade is optimistic that Drew Locke will be a solid NFL starter. Fant, he, he, has, he showed great game-breaking ability, but... Just like in college, we saw those drops. Now, two gems through... Uh, they, they found two gems in this draft. In Dalton Reiser, who I loved before the draft, and Draymond Jones, who was very disruptive on limited snaps. The other two picks appear to be flops at this point, especially Winfrey. But, I mean, with late round rounders, you, you kind of got to go with... Um, you kind of got to go out on a limb. Try to draft guys with high upside. And sometimes you're going to miss on that. Los Angeles Chargers gave them a B minus. It's looking like a D plus right now. Now, I love the first two picks in this draft. Tillery, he had a terrible year. I'm hoping it's just some growing pains. He'll get better. Uh, Adderley, he looked solid. However, the uh, majority of the season was cut short by injuries. Easton Stick is a huge question mark. We have no idea when it comes, uh, when it comes to how he's developed as a quarterback yet. So that's kind of a... Like I said, a question mark. Pipkins is a project, uh, and that showed this year. Now, Tranquil was a star on special teams. Now, when it comes to this draft, too many unknowns um, outside of Tranquil, so I, I couldn't really give this this 
draft grade anything higher than a D plus. So um, right now, as it stands, it's below average. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs had them with a B minus. I got them actually improving to a B plus after after the season. This class had some potential stars in Thornhill, uh, and honestly, if uh, Miko Hartman could expand that route tree and route running. Uh, or at least get better at route run, and then man, they, they got a stud there. Fenton had his moments, but uh, he had he got quality snaps and experience, so you gotta appreciate that. Saunders and uh, Thompson, they didn't see a lot of time, but they do really, they do have really good potential, and I like it. I like it. I liked it before the season. I like it after. So solid B. Oakland Raiders, I didn't. I didn't like their draft. I gave it a C. After the season, A minus. Man, what can I say? I can't speak to what I was thinking back then. I can speak a little bit, but here we are now, man. It's an A. It's an A minus. Now, like I said, I only give A grades typically to if you found superstars in the draft. But you can. But if you can also plug multiple holes on your team with quality players you're gonna probably get an a for me as well Farrell and abram uh they'll be easier to evaluate next season uh, especially because they did so much so many different things with Farrell, um and then abram was just hurt um as for the rest of this they got a top 10 uh running back in jacobs he was phenomenal quality stars in crosby and mullen um despite what i've said about mullen in the past for a rookie corner, he had a pretty good he had a pretty good year. He had some ups, he had some downs, but there was a lot to like. Um, they got a solid slot receiver in Renfro and a good good backup and Redzo tight end in um, Foster Moreau. Uh, th- this was probably one of the best draft classes, especially if Farrell if he ends up playing more like a top five pick. I don't think so, but I think his I think he should definitely play a lot better. Um, and then if Abrams, if he can return from injury, it looks good. Isaiah Johnson also didn't see um, much of any playing time, but he could wind out. He could wind up as an average starter, which ain't bad for a fourth round pick. Seattle Seahawks gave them a B minus, ended up giving up a D. Oh man, <laughs> DK Metcalf. <laughs> he he played over sixty four percent of the total snaps of this draft class he he was this draft class essentially now this class is filled with a lot of projects the thing about projects is they take some time to develop to develop and none paid real dividends this season hence the grade even if one develops in a quality starter or a key depth piece then this draft still kind of sucks given how many picks that they had really dk metcalf is the real um the, the, the only real looks like stud in this draft class arizona cardinals i love their draft i gave it an a after the season looking like a b kyle kyler murray he looks like a star but then what 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 did you get you got some solid pieces there jalen uh thompson he looks okay from the supplemental draft um but given how many picks there were i'm surprised that no one really shined murphy and isabella had their moments but outside of them it was a pretty disappointing class um Keyshawn Johnson got some good time but it's not like he's gonna be a star Zach Allen got some good snaps but I mean I, I expected much more from this class but it's still a solid grade nonetheless San Francisco 49ers gave them a B here we are sitting at an A man this class was really really good they 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 could have only honestly only hit on Nick Bosa and Debo Samuel and I probably still would have given an A because those were those are some solid solid players there but uh Greenlaw he looked great probably uh I think he looked better than uh uh K1 Alexander uh kind of kind of probably regretting signing him to all that money now but I uh, it's still quality uh Skull he's gonna be a very good backup there a tackle uh was it Wishnowski he he wasn't worth the fourth round pick i mean i'm not a big fan of picking a punter in the fourth round but he was near the bottom as far as when it comes to hunters this season so yeah and then harrison heard they'll return next year from injury and they could be solid contributors but like i said this was a very good class they got some high level talent in it los angeles rams i gave them a b plus 
looking like a C minus right now, and I know Rams fans ain't gonna be happy about that. Taylor Rapp, he proved to be a solid box of safety. But outside of that, there was really nothing to talk about. Opportunities were, were few and far between for guys like Henderson, Gaines, and Long. Um, Bobby Evans, David Edwards, they got valuable starts um, later in the uh, later in the season um, for the offensive line. But again, they were among the reasons why the Rams' offensive line was probably the worst in football. Just saying. So C minus. Green Bay Packers gave them a B, looking like a C plus. So not too big of a drop off. Um, Jenkins looks like a pro baller for the next 10 years. Savage, he was a good addition to the secondary, but after that, this draft kind of falls flat on their face. Um, what is this? Uh, Jace uh, Sternberger, uh, I expected I expected a little bit more out of him, but he was a quality special teams player. Um, I expected uh, Kingsley Kiki to come in and just take Mike Daniels' spot, and he barely really even saw the field. Uh, and Gary, he looks like a major miss at this point. He only had 15 pressures on 244 snaps. Just doesn't look good even as a developmental prospect. But remember, he was like the 12th overall pick. So just saying. Minnesota Vikings, I said a B at the time. I think it's a B even now. Bradbury, he got better much. He got much better down the stretch. Um, granted, didn't look good against the Niners in the playoff game, but neither did the whole offensive line. Really, when O'Neal left, it was kind of a nightmare for the Vikings. But if he could add some strength, he should be a solid starter. Um, he could be maybe be a better pass blocker there. Uh, after him, they plugged uh, some holes and had some nice, nice depth pieces on both sides of the football. Matter of fact, on all sides of the football. That's right. I mean, they got a very good long snapper in Austin Cutting and a good special teams gunner in Chris Boyd. Cameron Smith, Marcus Epps, and Dylan Mitchell were probably the only immediate misses from this draft class. But like I said, they got quality pieces in this class. Chicago Bears gave them a B, looking like a D+. Plus. Um, it's kind of hard factoring the Khalil Mack uh, trade in this, but it seems he might be the only valuable asset from this draft class. Uh, a very uneven year from uh, Montgomery, and I thought he, I, I loved him in the draft. Um, but the, it leaves room for improvement upon this grade, but no one else saw the field. I mean, you got Ryle, uh, was it, uh, Riley Ridley? He saw... What 108 snaps turned it into six yards, 60 or six receptions, 69 yards. Nice, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, outside of that, um, yeah, not a lot to like. They they released uh, what is it? Uh, the running back White they got in the draft, and Steelers took him away and actually put him to use. So yeah, D plus. Detroit Lions gave him a B minus, looking like a C. It was just a very. This was probably the most Lions draft you could ask for average mediocre Hawkinson uh Tavia they found themselves on IR but even then they weren't anything particularly special uh Harris looked fine near the end of the year in the safety rotation uh Aware, he flashed in the last two games but after that it was pretty eh I mean you got Ty Johnson yeah you got Austin Bryant yeah and then Isaac uh was it Natu or Natua uh eh, he was actually he wasn't too shabby but yeah it was a pretty average draft so i mean don't take c as a negative c is average it was average c's not a negative if you in the d's or god forbid an f i don't think anyone got an f but uh then then you had a really poor class pittsburgh steelers gave him a b i still think it is a b i think they uh got this one right bush he was very good minus the zone coverage but even that got better uh throughout the year i thought johnson had star potential um deontay johnson and it really showed this year snell he provided some good depth at running back they even poached like i said mentioned earlier the bears seventh rounder uh kirith um white for more depth isaiah bugs he saw some time in the d line rotation after stefan to went down uh lane was a valuable special teamer um, and I liked Lane a lot at corner, but he was buried by tremendous depth between b behind Joe Hayden, Steve Nelson, who had an awesome year, uh, Mike Hilton, and even Cameron Sutton. All those guys were money this year in pass coverage. They all had 71, gra uh, 71 grades this season by PFF. 
which is actually really, really good. So you you are behind four extremely good players. Can't really say anything about that. And they even managed to pull three wins out of undrafted free agent Devlin, the Duck Dynasty Hodges. I mean, I would say a B. <laughs> good job, Steelers. Baltimore Ravens. I gave them a B. It's looking like a C minus right now. I wanted to give this one a D plus. I really did. But first round pick, Hollywood Brown. Baltimore Brown. I don't know. Marquise Brown. Let's just call him that. Uh, anyway, uh, he, he was enough to elevate this uh, draft grade slightly. Outside of him, though, it's a pretty meh, eh draft class. Uh, Hill and Powers, they were buried uh, on the depth chart. And then Ferguson looked uh, much like a majority of of the pass rushers the Ravens have recently drafted. I mean, j just nothing special. I mean, of course, Zadarius Smith, he's the exception, not the normal, not the standard, to which the Ravens draft at edge. But even then, I mean, he, he didn't really become a star until leaving Baltimore. Cleveland gave them a B. I got a D plus right now. Getting greedy in the second round was a steal. That was quality. He'll be a solid starter. They got, uh, was it, Sabert? Um, he's been he was a nice kicker this year, and that's about it. Red Wine was a fine special teamer. He probably deserves more snaps at safety on defense, but uh, was it Taki Taki? Uh, he stuck behind Schober, and he was actually forced a lot to play um out of position this year, and I think that was more detrimental to him and the team. And then Mac Wilson was exactly the player I said he would be before the draft. Doesn't mean he will be. It doesn't mean there's no like. Doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that he is going to be forever a bad player over his career. I'm just saying it was what I said before the draft was very indicative during the season. The guy is a highlight reel. The only problem is that's about 10% of the time he's on the field. The other 90%, it's pretty horrible. He had like 11 missed tackles. He wasn't good in run or in coverage. It was just, yeah. But the guy, he's got a ton, like I said, he's got a ton of physical intangibles. Just needs to put it all together. So when you're looking at this draft class, it amounted to a kicker in a number two corner. Yeah, D plus. Cincinnati Bengals. I gave him a B plus. I was I loved, I liked this draft a lot. Uh gave him a C after this season. Um, because there was a lot of it's I don't know, there's a, a lot of questions. We don't know what we got in Jonah Williams till next season. So couldn't really include him into this grade. Second round pick. Uh, they spent a second round pick on a blocking specialist tight end. Uh, that was, I think, just a bad move. I don't like using a pick that high on a blocking tight end in today's NFL. Um, Pratt, he looked good as a run defender. Um, and if he could improve in coverage, then he should be a nice starter. Uh, but it really, it was the undrafted free agents I really liked here. Uh, the offensive tackle, Fred Johnson. He was pretty good, and then special teamer um, Stanley Morgan Jr., who I actually I was surprised he didn't get drafted. He was really good, um, so great pickups there. Michael Jordan, though, he had a really, really bad season despite all the, uh, despite a good season finale, I should say, but I guess that's some positive to look at towards next season. But the rest of this class um, either ended up cut or on IR. Finley, he looks like a fine backup, though, so... Uh, C plus till we, uh, till we, uh, was it, uh, Janona more? No, that was a dumb joke. You know, like, till we know more, Jonah, till we ja know more. As. Yeah, it was a dumb joke. Play on words. Ha <laughs> ha. Funny. New Orleans Saints. Gave them a B minus. I bumped it up to a B because I really liked their first two picks. And th these are really the only picks that did anything. Um, they, they hit big with McCoy. He's going to be a pro baller. Uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, or CGJ, baby, proved to be a solid slot corner. He allowed only 311 yards there. Um, outside of that, you got Ellis and Hampton. They couldn't even really get good snaps on special teams. But uh, their first two picks, they make, up, they make this draft class grade. Uh, they did really well with the few picks that they had. So good job, Saints. Carolina Panthers, I gave them a B. I, I liked what they were doing. Uh, D plus for execution at the end of the season. This wasn't a great draft. Uh, Burns, he looked good, but uh, injury knocked him out of action. And then when he returned, he really saw a limited role. Um, 
Greg Little, he was pretty subpar, which is actually kind of the norm for rookie tackles. But his replacement, uh, fellow rookie Dennis Daly, he surrendered seven sacks. So uh, that that's kind of, uh, you know. And then uh, Will Greer, a guy that I liked a lot in the draft, uh, didn't look great. <laughs> Uh, didn't look like he should be a starter. Didn't look like he should be a backup uh, after getting the starts at the end of the season. They really should bring back Kyle Allen. But, yeah, didn't get much out of this class outside of Burns. And until we can figure out if Greg Little can um, prove otherwise and develop. Atlanta Falcons gave them a B- minus after the draft, after the season. Uh, I put C-. minus. Uh, I'm kind of flirting with a C. Lindstrom looked really good. Um, but he was limited by injuries. McGarry, uh, he allowed 13 sacks, had five penalties, so that's kind of alarming. He should be much better next season, though. But um, it's still, it was a rough rookie year. Then you got, uh, was it um, uh, Sheffield? He got the uh, start in week six uh, at corner. However, he allowed over 400 yards receiving this year. Um, he did get better down the stretch, so there's a bit of optimism with that. Um, you got uh, Kaminsky. Um, he saw a limited time. Olsen, a running back, offered nothing in the run game. So the first three picks got valuable experience, but you're still hoping that these guys pan out. So got that. Tampa Bay Buccaneers gave them a B- minus after the draft. I loved this draft, B+. Plus. Dean should be a star at corner. I love him. If not, quality number two. Murphy Button, um, he should be a solid slot corner. Uh, Anthony Nelson proved to be a really good run defender in limited snaps. Scotty Miller provided good depth at receiver. Even Gay had a strong season um, at kicker till uh, he missed like five field goals in the final three games. But it doesn't take away what he did through a bulk of the year. He's still going to be a good kicker in the league. Uh, White, Devin White, he was a liability in run defense. He missed like 13 tackles, but you saw the athleticism. And. Uh, in the end, it, he has, it, it's just, it's a it's huge promise of just talent, potential. You know what he can be. We knew he was going to be uh, more of a coverage type of guy. Um, so, yeah, it's a great draft by the Bucks. I like it a lot. I'm going to take a quick sip. Oh, I really needed that water. Oh, Tennessee Titans. I gave him an A+. This was my favorite draft class, draft class coming out of um the 2019 draft and gave him an a minus it's not like it was like a bad draft class it's not like oh well, i'm not gonna get down a few i don't know a plus is kind of like i feel like you're almost hitting on like four picks at that point two of them are like super superstars so i don't know a plus uh, great great in these things is kind of tricky but a minus is still a really good great aj brown he's a stud simmons he has similar potential um, he got to start later in the year. Even Nate Davis, he had a rough year at right guard, but that was uh, that was to be expected. I thought he was a developmental uh, type guy, but he's really picked it up, especially in the playoffs. He, that offensive line looks phenomenal for the Titans. Hooker looked good in limited duty, but uh, was it DeAndre Walker? He didn't see a snap. David Long, uh, he was more of a liability as a special teamer, but the top part of this draft was great and provided good building blocks for the future houston texans gave him a b dropped it to a b minus here howard and uh was it uh sharpen um they looked like they look like they're gonna be mainstays on the offensive line especially once they moved howard to right tackle they combined they only allowed five sacks this year uh was it omenihu um get the cat out of uh texas he was actually pretty good with the few opportunities he got this year he had 30 pressures and three sacks on that defensive line so there's that to the future lonnie johnson though didn't play that well um and he was replaced uh by the traded uh conley so good draft sure enough one of the biggest weaknesses of the texans in the offensive line onto the jaguars jaguars gave him a b ended with an a minus i really really liked this draft josh allen was a steal at the seventh overall pick Jaywan taylor was much better after week seven allowing only two sacks committed seven penalties he was highly penalized this year 
But compare that to the first six games of the year where he had he allowed six sacks, seven penalties. It was a polar opposite with from the. It, it was just a. It, it was just huge for him when he looked at the first six games of the year to the last ten. He was he was pretty good. Um, now let's talk about Uncle Rico though. Uncle Rico for a six round pick. Take a look. He threw. He only threw for over thirty two thousand or thirty two thousand. Wow, thirty two hundred yards. He had twenty one touchdowns with only six picks. He forced Nick Foles, the highly highly paid free agent acquisition, to return to the bench. And there's a legit case that Minshew should be the starter next season. Oliver. Now Oliver. He was hurt all year. Quincy um, Williams, he allowed 32 receptions on 36 targets for close to 400 yards. So not great, but uh, it doesn't hurt that the first two picks were were pretty good and that they got incredible value in the sixth round and potentially a franchise quarterback in Uncle Rico. Indianapolis Colts ended off the list here because their draft was, for me, the most Confusing. Uh, I had a C plus for their grade after the draft. Gave it a B plus. I was very unsure when it came to their draft class. It was hard to gauge, and that really affect uh, reflected in my original grade. Um, I went back and watched the video, and even like just looking at me, I was like, I didn't know. I was confused. I don't know what they were doing, but I had faith in the organization as they're really good at developing talent. So I was like, you know, they. I'm sure they know what they're doing, but I don't. <laughs> Uh, but they got a lot of quality pieces on defense. Rocky Asin, Bobby, uh, was it, uh, Okariki, and then, um, Kari Willis. They all look like solid starters for years to come. Uh, was it Banogu, um, and Tell? They provide good depth on defense. However, uh, on offense, their late round linemen, they didn't play any significant time. So, eh. But Campbell's season, also Paris Campbell, man, his season was riddled with injuries. Um, overall, though, they they may have got three quality starters and some good depth on that defense. So I could see them going offense in this draft. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead and do the YouTube things. Much appreciated. Much obliged. But until... Oh, sorry. Gassy. Till next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.